The year was 2006. I was working as a farmhand. My mom was working as a maid, and uh, we didn't have a lot of money at the time. And I slipped on the back of a flatbed loading uh, hay into a barn, and I landed on my rib, ribs on my right side. And uh, we decided we needed to go to the doctor, and we didn't have a lot of money. And we heard about a free clinic this church was putting on every Thursday night. It was a Methodist church. And so we decided, okay, we'll do that. And we heard it open its doors at 5. So we got there right when the doors opened. And basically we waited in an outside line the first uh, hour, hour and a half. And then we got in the building. And so uh, probably about two hours in, they wheeled this man in in a wheelchair. And they let him get in front of us because um, he was in a wheelchair and probably worse off than us. And so he was about maybe three, four people in front of me. And uh, he had a nurse with him. He had, let, well, I don't know if it was a nurse or a, um, some type of caregiver. She was in a white uniform. I don't think she was a registered nurse. And uh, she could have been from a nursing home. He could have been from a nursing home. And uh, about 30 minutes later, he slumped over like that. Couldn't keep his head up. And uh, she called one of the nurses over who uh, was helping people with paperwork, someone who worked, volunteered there. And uh, they checked his pulse and nothing. And I remember his helper kept shaking him and saying, Mr. Walker, Mr. Walker, wake up. And his eyes were kind of half open, and he was just looking down. And uh, the other nurse stopped him and said, stopped her from doing that and said, he's dead. And uh, they didn't try to do any heroics. Uh, they you know, didn't try to revive him. Um, he was very old. He was in a wheelchair. And uh, basically the protocol for that in a free clinic was they pushed his wheelchair down the other hall so we didn't have to look at his face, I guess. And uh, my mind started playing tricks on me because I, I stared at him down at the outer hall and I was looking for movement. And every once in a while I think I, I thought I would see him move, but it really wasn't anything. And uh, they called the EMTs and it took the EMTs about an hour to get there. And so we just stared at him for an hour. And uh, they checked his pulse and confirmed he was dead. And um, they willed him out. And that was the last time I saw Mr. Walker. He died in the line in front of me, about five people in front of me. Um, I was just thinking, what a depressing way to go, not around family, not in your own home, but in a, a line for the free clinic. And I don't know why they didn't take him to a real doctor if there was something really bad wrong with him. I don't know what was wrong with him, but it sounds like gross negligence to me to take him to a free clinic where you know he might be seen five hours later. Anyway, five hours later I was seen by the elderly doctor, I think he was volunteering, he's probably retired. He poked me in the rib and said I had a pulled ab muscle. No x-rays, nothing, and told me to go home and rest. You have a story like that where you saw someone die in front of you, and that's uh, when I saw Mr. Walker die in front of me.